So each time I ask a question, they can't forget it. Each time we have information center, and uh, we are the ones who distribute, manage, and distribute the IP addresses in the Asia Pac, uh, 56 economies, all the way from Afghanistan to uh, to the Little Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Um, so. Um, we're going to play a game in how APNIC distributes, you know, what happens. And so this is my first time interacting with this game. But this game was played at uh, APGA in Korea and uh, APSIG in Bangkok as well, you know. So there's two volunteers here who've been part of those, uh, this game before and they're going to help me out. So let's do this. Did I click Yeah, they have one. Yeah, they have one. It's okay. So, I'm um, sending data over the internet. You know, you've been listening to a lot of uh, great speakers here, you know, more experienced speakers than me here in the IT space. I'm always new to this space because there's always new. There's always something new to learn and uh, it's good to be here. Um, so the data is sent over the internet in discrete packets, right? You know, we don't say email or browsing, right? It's packets, right? You know, most of you know. And these packets are sent from a source to a destination, okay? It has to travel from one place to the other place, right? Then it will reach to wherever you want to send the packets. And every source and destination in the internet must have an IP address. Okay, that's how the internet works. And that's what the APNIC does, distributing those IP resources to the network operators, uh, whoever is running a network. So in this game, there are a lot of organizations involved. You know, and you've been hearing ICANN, but there's one of the organizations here, you know, the meeting is in, in a week, in a day's time, you know, it starts. So that's one organization, but there's a lot of other organizations as well. So I like 11 volunteers, okay, just get up. And then I'll say what we're going to do because there were volunteers. So who's interested to volunteer to be an ISAR organization? Sorry. ISAR. I'll explain, but I need 11 volunteers. So if you come forward, please. 11 volunteers, if you come forward. As I said, this is an interactive game. I know you just had your lunch, you know, you want to relax, but now we're going to engage yourself. <laughs> Okay, what you do is you go up on the stage and then drag this over there, you grab one and put it on your back. Okay? Yes, eleven. If there's more than eleven, sorry you have to come back and take your seat. Alright. Just stay on up on the stage and put your badge on. And if there's anything left there. Okay. If you just show this way, you know, so everyone can see you, who you are. So these are the ISTAR organizations, right? You know, we have ITU, we have ICANN, ITF, you know, these are called ISTAR organizations, okay? And they also have an ISTAR club, where they meet at ICANN meetings, ABD meetings, you know. They discuss, you know, what they have to collaborate and cooperate and for the better of the community. So, we've been talking about ITU that wanted to take over the internet, you know, but things happened, you know, it's still staying in the multi-stakeholder model. So, I have this person to just take your seat, please. We are done with that. We're not going to give the internet to you. Right? And ITF is the multi-stakeholder model, you know, where you've been hearing, it's all the buzz and, you know, they everyone come and discuss. Um, so if you don't have much role here, then uh, you can work the idea, you can take part in it, you can express all your feelings out there, and you can make work with others, right? Please, thank you. And then we have uh, ISOC, who is ISOC? Mm -hmm. Then we have Internet Society there, right? Internet Society is also very important uh, in this ISOC organization. You know, they are the ones who actually uh, organize the IETF, yes. where the standards are yeah, okay, we understand this, I discuss, right? So, thank you, Aizo. <laughs> and he goes uh, back and back later, okay? Um, then we go to uh, IETF, okay? So, these are the brainy fellows, you know, the, the professors, the engineers, you know, they come and they discuss, you know, what the internet protocol should be, how it should work, and so what they did is they designed the protocol. I'm not sure if it's my microphone or I was speaking to the 
The one announcement, the internet has been set right. So please test, because our administrator has to leave now. If there's any problem, please record immediately, otherwise we'll be deleted. Is this the old one or the time? Same, same. No. Is there a proxy? Thank you, Charlie. So, so quick check, quick check. Um, there are two SSIDs. There are two SSIDs. I, triple ID hyphen guest, triple ID hyphen guest one. The password is same. Yes, the name. Yes, the name. Triple I P. So uh, our request is just to see if you are still having any internet issues or you are able to log. We have our network administrator here. In case there is anything, we, we can just. Is there still proxy? There is a proxy. There is a proxy, so we can't avoid the proxy. So I, I just want to see if everyone is fine. If there is a problem, we are not. But you have to have a base. So in case one doesn't work, please use the other one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So many, many, can we switch off that microphone? Maybe so yeah. I'm hearing that or not. Yeah. I can hear the person. Okay. Um, so where is the box? This is a magic box. So the engineers and you know, the professors, they, they, they define the protocol, right? IP protocol, IP standard. So this is the box. And what they did is, they gave it to someone. You know, it has to be distributed to the community, right? So they gave it to ICANN. Oh, right. Please do it, Okay, I'll explain what's in the box later. But I can be the one you know, who manages the names and numbers, of course, right? In a broad protocol, okay? They are the ones who manage numbers. But it's such a large organization, so what they have done is they have created what? You can see the name here, it's up here. Ayana, you said Ayana? Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Ayana manages the numbers, you know, right? Okay. So, Fox will go to Ayana and take your seat, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, Ayana is the one who actually holds the entire pages of IP addresses. You know, IPv6, IPv4, AS numbers, everything. All numbers, okay? They hold those. But they can't, it's a real big uh, continent, a big world, you know, they can't distribute on their own. So what they did is, the, not they did, the communities did is they formed the RARs, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see all the RARs here. Um, Afrinic, Maren, Lacnic, Apinic, and RIPNCC. So we have five RARs in the world. And we coordinate, all the five RARs, we coordinate on number resource organization. And uh, some of the presenters, you know, they've been talking about the ASO AC icon. It's the same as NRO AC for us. They're the same guys who represent on board. And they get elected by the community, two of them. And one is appointed by the RER board. So since we are in um, AP NIC region, I would ask uh, the rest of the RERs to please go and take your seat. And, but AP NIC stay out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of the ones, please, in that video. So I am now, since we are in APN region, right? So the entire box goes to the APN because the APN is the area for this uh, Asia Bank. And thank you, Ayana. Yeah, thank you, Ayana. <laughs> so now APN got the the magic box. Uh, when APN has to what, distribute them to everyone. So I would ask my volunteers to give one pack each to one of the participants here. Just don't go there, we don't take the pack and I'll uh, explain everyone. Everyone gets one. Yeah, I'll just say yeah, I need the pack so I can play the game on the game exception. It's better. Okay, so we have the pack and we can take it back and thank you. So this game is really in a different stage, you know, we like to hear your comments, we develop it further. Useful or not, we say the routing, the switching, you know, all the different It's like we got something, you know, instead of just doing a presentation, we got something to do to get involved, everyone in this game. Right. So, you got, everyone got one? Yeah, so, any technical person here, how many uh, 
blocks of cards which is distributed. Do we have any more? Do we have some more? Uh, you just have to share, sorry, you share with other person, you know, you can. If, if you didn't receive one, you know, you can share it with the other person. Just come forward and uh, just share with other people. Yeah. Now, next question I'm going to ask. So, uh, anyone can explain how many sets of cards that we just distributed? Eight. 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 How many packs we just distributed? 32. 32. What is the reason for 32? Yeah, it's, uh, and we can't have more? Uh, yeah, it's because you know the 32 bit address is space of RPG4. We cannot have more than that. Exactly. So I, I can't print more, you know. They, 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 they're not breaking the IETF standards, right? I can't do that. You know, they decided you know, it has to be 32 bit, you know, and these 32 packs. Right? So if someone didn't get them, you know, please join the others to share with them because they have each have eight of them in their packs. Right? Okay, so this is how it works. Um, if you look at the red card right on the top, you have symbols on there. Okay. Uh, is that the label pointer here? Now that explains uh, what your role is in this in this game. And each one of you have a different shape. On, on the card, okay, and that's your IPv4 address, okay. It's a slash eight, right? That's why we just put the number 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, that symbol is for if you have that, that means you are a router, okay. And this one we are using the the planet's names here because we don't want to, for political reason, we don't want to use the economies of the countries, okay. So we're going to build a network of joining all these planets, okay? So some may have Venus, some may have Mars, you know, exactly, okay? On the blue card, um, that symbol shows that you are your AS number, okay? So you have an AS number, autonomous system number, right? And again, you have the IP address. Um, you also can see the binary and decimal, right? And then it shows, you know, which uh, planet you belong to, all right? And then it shows what device you are. Okay. So some cars have uh, a, a mobile device, some cars have a PC, you know, some cars have different ones. Car and maybe. So it's very much IoT game. Okay. So so those are the symbols. Get familiar with them. Uh, what you be going to do is now um, to explain the IP addresses, you know. Uh, how many of you want me to go into very deep in this one? You know, because I only have 60 minutes. I'm, I'm already finished half an hour of my <laughs> my game here. Uh, I believe you can Google and find out how the decimals are converted to you know the numbers and you know okay. and uh, and uh, IPv6 hexadecimals. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, and the bytes and bits. Okay, so I'm going to skip this one. Skip that one. Mm. Let's do the network, right? So. What I'll do is, I'll ask um, oops, um, everyone who has a router card, do you remember the symbol where on the red card you have a router with arrows pointing inwards, right? And you identify the symbol, you identify what symbol you are, okay? And then you go and join the group. On the tables here, you have those symbols on the table. So if you are hard shaped, you should be coming and joining here. Okay? So go and try find your group. So the volunteers can help you. So if you have a square, the square is here. Right in the pen. The square one is right in the pen here.
Okay, quickly, come on, guys, quickly. Don't have much time. Spread, thumb in the frame, spread. Yeah, I'll be here. Extra ball in the frame, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
spread. spread. Okay. So if you are sending packets to spread, then the spread will follow their path. Okay. To send the packets to the destination. But along this, there's few more terminologies here. Okay. Some are transit and some are peer. All right. Can anyone explain what transit means? Passing. 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 Oh, Passing. He didn't raise the hand, so he has to Okay. Passing. Passing through. Passing. So they're just taking the traffic, whatever is coming. They're passing through, right? One way traffic in peering means two way. And the peering means two way communication. Yeah, but what, what else happening in peering? Peering depending on the data that is downloaded or uploaded on that. So they have an agreement which says that, okay, if, if it is equal number, equal or, or depending on whatever the difference is. Uh, just uh, thanks for your question, but we are running out. So I'll just simplify it. They're exchanging the prefixes. Prefixes are the IP num numbers. You know, they're exchanging themselves. Okay. So I say, okay, you give yours, I give mine. Okay. So we learn from each other. Okay. So that's what happening. So these routers here, they have to, they have their own networks built and their own network path. And each one of them actually do have uh, their own network path here. That's what I'm presenting there. It's a simple one, but they each router have, so this router is um, log on here, you know, and they have their own routing pass here. Okay. Right? Now I need to put it. And some, sometimes, you know, they are connected between the nations as well, right? Some, sometimes, you know, it's actually, the network is around the world, you know, not just in India, right? All the networks in India must connect to the rest of the world. So they interconnect each. We are demonstrating here as a climax here, but they are interconnecting as well. Okay. And sometimes they also have market presence more than one economy. Okay. I believe Tata is Tata here. Tata International as well. They are in Singapore. They are in Japan. You know. So they have multiple networks in multiple nations as well, and they're all interconnected exactly the same way. Okay. So the IP address and the AS numbers play a critical role here, very important critical role in transferring the packets. Okay, the AS numbers, the routers will have that AS number, um, and each AS number is like it. If you're sending snail mail, what do you have? Enter. No. Pin codes. Pin Yeah, postcode, pin code. They are like postcode, pin codes, right? Okay. So they know where to take the packet from one point to the other point. They know where to put it has to go. Okay, and this is not a new technology. Okay, we've been writing mails and sending to you know to via postal you know service and the guys at the postal service, the postman know exactly where to take over that. You know, it's the same. You know, we nothing invented here really, to be honest. But it's all digitalized. Okay. And we have a lot of complexity around this one here, you know. We have IoT devices, there's mobile phones, you know, you can also access internet out of the flights now these days, right? You know, and you have uh, devices you can access in your car, so it's all these wi fi and everything is interacting in there, okay? So, I'll skip this one. Uh, it's for them to write their numbers, you know, but let's do what we do is now sending the packets. Okay, let's do that game of sending the packets. I'm going to need uh, one volunteer. Uh, anyone? So I have a packet here, okay? And it's it's from 135. Who got 135? Quickly look at your packs. The IP, IP range. You got 135. Okay, hold on to that. Now, the router itself is a computer as well. <laughs> because they, they do have data centers and they have a lot of servers sitting in there, you know, so they run their own business as well. Sometimes. So, where does it, that packet has to go? If you look at the address. In the packet? No, on the packet. On the packet. So it's uh, from 135, which is the square here, and it has to go to 151, right? Where is 151? Who got 151? You have, not just sit there. So how are you going to send this to 151 there? Now you have to check. <laughs> you have to check what? 
So I'll make it simply, you know, then I'm going to check the routing table and look at the path, okay? So, um, what year is square? So you have to send it to? Square. Let's look at the square. That triangle, you can look at it over here. You can see it. You have the square, right? So you have to send it to triangle. And the 151 is, um, you're in the triangle? Okay, so just one hop there. So you just give it a triangle. Yeah. You give it a triangle. Yeah. And then what you have to do? I got three more options. No, but you have to, the 151 is here. 151 is here. So you have to deliver it to your customer. Right. So this is just a simple example of one hop. Okay. From square router to the triangle router and went to the Customer, where that go? Okay. Now I have. Uh, do we have more time, Sadish? Sure. Then this this is a bit complex game. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, going from. I can go ahead. Okay. This is going from 95. So who is the 95? Uh, you are the 95. Okay. I'm going to give it to you. And you can say where you're going to send that packet to. 135. 135. <laughs> so, what, what, what is the router? Look, check out the symbol there. So, you have to give it to? You have to send it to your router first. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. And then, where you have to send it? Too hard. Too hard, okay. Give it, just follow the maps. So, it will be easy. Okay, and then, you have to give it to? Guys, can you hold your uh, routers? Who is the router? Who is the router? Who is the and where do you have to send this to? <laughs> okay, it either it should go to 135. So where is 135? <laughs> no, you have to give it to 135. Maybe you turn your page and you put 135. Oh, that's here. It's on newer here. Yeah. So which way you should go? So he is actually hard there, and he got multiple parts, right? As you can see, he's got multiple parts. But the packet has to reach to who? Shortest. To the Shortest. square. To the square. In this example, it has to go to the square. So which path he has to take? Which is the shortest one? Triangle, and then he goes to square, right? So it has to go to triangle. You need to you need to check your, your table. Yeah. You need to go to triangle, right? So okay. and, and then give it a triangle and the triangle will give it to the square. Triangle. Okay. Triangle. 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 The triangle will give it to the square. Okay. Now the square is actually running their own server, so that's their own host, you know. So it's a little bit complicated here. That was a simple example of one hop. This was two hops, okay? Yeah. Just direct connection there and then one hop and then went to the square. So you can build these complex networks like this, you know, and the internet is really a complex network, you know, and it's very multi stakeholder model, no governments are controlling it, you heard from many speakers here. Okay. And that's how it's supposed to be running as well in future. So all the routing tables here, I'm going to skip it. Let's talk about domain name systems. Okay, as I said, I can deal with names and numbers, right? And the protocols, the standards, and the packets also travels between the names and numbers. Okay. So we have a DNS here. Um, what is the uh, raise your hand and say what is DNS stands for? <laughs> I don't have that many in my bag. <laughs> I don't have that many. But who said first? <laughs> okay. So this is a client machine here. Asking, you know, I want to go to actually, I want, I want www.apnic.net, okay, and it's sending the query to the nearest DNS, okay. Uh, I, I know I heard about uh, questions on root servers as well. Um, and the DNS is sending what? IP address. IP address. Because the packets actually need the IP number, okay. For humans, for us, we can remember the names, you know, apnic.net or icann.org or, you know, inc.in we can remember but the machines need the numbers to understand where to go
using the purely data of the view for examples, but it's the same, okay? So when you're building the networks, you have to build networks for the future generation as well, which is like UV6, okay? And the way we currently do it is we do a stack them, okay? So when client requests for a DNS record, the DNS will send, depends on the request is coming over V6 or V4, it will send, if it, if it got a record in there for V6 or V4, it will send the, the appropriate number, okay? Now by default, I think in most of the latest computers and everything, devices, by default it's V6. It looks for V6, okay? If V6 fails or V6 doesn't have there, you know, then it throws the V4, okay? So we have a root server. Uh, who got the card 100? I may have this 100. Someone, someone should have it, okay. So this person is the root server and attached to what uh, triangle? triangle? So uh, the triangle, okay. So that, that root server is based in the triangle network, okay. And who got 90? Yeah. Yeah. So this 90 is a dot .NET registry, okay. So what is that dot .NET registry mean? What do, what do this um, dot .NET registry holds? What names does it hold? Are the domains? All that ends with dot .NET, okay? That's why it's a dot .NET registry, okay? And so any request that comes to uh, dot .NET will hit the root server and go goes to the registry and then looks up the IP addresses, okay? So there is an example in there. So that in the dot .NET registry, uh, it got all the records there and all the dot .NET records and got apdic.net and the number 931. Okay, that's the IP address of the apdic.net server. Okay, so what happens is this 31 will serve the website. Okay, so it goes from the root server, root router to the root server to the DNS net and you know this is all done by the DNS. And then it goes to the server and the server just gives the record. Okay, the website. Now what happened is, you know, I think some of the speakers touched based on this as well, especially in the APD region, in Asia Pac region, we ran out of IPv4 addresses before anyone actually did. Because the internet was booming here, you know, in the Asia Pac and the consumption was increasing, the demand for IPv4 was increasing, so we actually ran out of uh, IPv4 addresses. So it was 32 bits and then we, the IDM decided to introduce the uh, next generation of internet addresses which is a V6 and it got 128 bits, you know, it's a quite a large chunk of IP, uh, IP range, you know. Um, I don't think, you know, we will finish ever, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Depends, you know, how the prolif internet proliferation is going on and then, uh, but for now, you know, it's enough for everyone, okay. It's a quite large address space. But at the same time, we're also dealing with, uh, I didn't distribute these cards, I have it on the table because it's going to take a long time. But these are the black lines, the NACs, okay? Network address translations, the NACs. So with the concept, with the exhaustion of IPv4, there's a choice of uh, for the operators to go for V6, deploy V6, right? Get away V6 block from the RARs or the providers and deploy V6. But most of them, uh, especially in this part of the world, are deploying NACs after NACs to consume that uh, IPv4. And use it to the maximum, okay? So what they're doing is, you know, they're putting a NAT and a NAT and a NAT and trying to hook up to the customers and, you know. But this will pose a lot of uh, law enforcement questions, okay? Why? Raise your hand and say. You, so network address translation, right. you will never know. Just when I need to send the IP, uh, send the data, I get a dynamic address and I send it. So when you, when, if I have committed a crime, and you will uh, get to know the IP address, but that is not static. Okay. Exactly. So the law enforcement agencies have a take dealing with this uh, NAC because the purpose of the IP address and when you actually uh, use IPv6 is the end-to-end -end connectivity. We want to know, you know, who is the source, who is the destination, okay? Who is using this IP block or the IP address, right? So that's interesting. Um, that's why the IPv6, you know, there's no NAS, but um, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Uh, so at least it will provide the internet connectivity. So with this, having these NATs, you know, building upon building upon NATs, it's not a good business model. Okay, uh, it's not a good business model. But it's happening. We can't stop it. It's happening. People, uh, networks are deploying it. So this is the routing uh, uh, table. 
Um, we have, uh, as of May 17th, May, we have about 609,000 prefixes. Um, and this is all V4 prefixes. Okay, there's no V6 in here. There's all these V4 prefixes. And you can see the where it started, you know, introduction of CI, C, what is CIDR? Classless Internet Download Routing. Classless Internet Download Routing, that's right. That means you can actually, uh, we don't use any more of class tools like class A, class B, class C. That's what happens in the early days of the distribution of IPv4 and that's where we wasted a lot of IPv4 actually. It's all sitting in the legacy space, you know. Uh, and we can't reclaim it because in those days there was no agreements that you had to sign an agreement to take it. So if you come and ask me, I need a class B, you know, I just gave it. No agreement signed. So now I can't go back to that person, take it. He will sue me. <laughs> right? So that's what happened. And a lot of things happened actually. Um, you can see, you know, um, the projection of the growth table was uh, with the CIDR, we sort of controlled it by chopping the blocks wherever we can, but not giving full ranges. We controlled it, but it was still increasing because the demand for internet is going up. Okay. And we deployed the CIDR, all the RARs we deployed it, all the RARs again, okay, we should now um, go from classfuls to classless. Okay. So we sustained a little while, but then the dot com boom, you know, the number of websites, the number of servers coming up, you know, it could keep pushing upwards and upwards anyway. Um, we, we finished it, you know, that's the day 2011, uh, Asia Pacific region, you know, we came to the last slash eight. And out of the last slash eight, we only have limited numbers, you know, reserved for the new networks or those who want to get on the internet, you know, we only have limited numbers. So that's my presentation. What I request is, whoever got the material from me for this game, please return it so we can play this game in a just event, okay? But if you have any questions, I'm happy to take. Uh, depending, we have. I think we have time still. Yeah. Um, any questions related to the evening or the explosion? You know. Yeah. Um, so my name is Shivendu. So this execution of IPv4 is done in 2011. So now we are in V6. So what is the Statistics or new data, your, your data you have, uh, the implementation of IPv6 in SA Pacific? Okay, um, that's a very good question. Um, the IPv6 deployment is growing, you know, it's on a steady growth path, but within the, the Asia Pacific, you know, it's not, we're not seeing that much deployment yet. Uh, there's a lot of awareness has been created, a lot of, uh, in the conferences we've been talking about it, the operators do understand that they have to move to V6. But it's their decision, right? It's their decision. It's their customer. It's their business. So they have to do it one day. You know. Hopefully, we'll see uh, a big growth in IPv6 here. Thank you. Sorry, this is Babar Mukherjee. Uh, you just uh, said uh, you also uh, put a question. You, you said uh, in Asia Pacific, the IPv4 is almost exhausted, and some other uh, region. Uh, are also there and they are having, still they are having, but they don't have mass population in number of basic messaging. So uh, what will be the role of uh, uh, ICANN or, or this internet governance uh, global forum to, to make facilitation of uh, exchanging or shifting those available to do or, uh, you know, uh, Yeah, okay, good question. Again, a good question. One as well. Um, so the, I don't think uh, uh, the others can correct me, but uh, um, so this is the RAR's regime, right? You know, so the RAR's have to decide what to do with this one, and the RAR communities actually decide what to do with this one. It's nothing to do with the ICANN here, you know. It's the communities what they want RARs to do with, with this exhaustion. Actually, the exhaustion happened in the first in Asia Pac, but now we are, there's no more IPv4 in the Aran region or Rife region. Uh, the Latinic have some and Africanic have a bit more than uh, because that the internet in Africa is uh, growing a little bit slower than the other regions, so they still have big ones. But what the community decided is, you know, they said, you know, exactly the point, you know, we don't have it, but the others have it, how can we bring those to here? So they agreed and they decided to have a transfer policy. Okay, so the inter RAR transfer policy. Now we have an inter RAR transfer policy now with Aaron the one in America, uh, and the other like MCC, which is in Europe. So if your network is based in Asia Pacific, and you identify a source 
in the other area that you want to bring that IP address, you can do it now with the transfer policy. You can bring it here. It's all legitimate. But the, the question of, uh, uh, so the, I just want to explain a little bit further. The RAS role in this one is to just make sure that uh, the transfer happens. Okay? We bring it from that region to this region. But the RAS are not there to say anything about you know, the transaction between the receiver and uh, the seller. Okay? We are not involved in the transaction. Okay? That's up to you. And there is a cost for that. Okay, there's a black market out there, there's a cost for that. So if you agree to pay that money to that person to bring the address and we will facilitate the transfer, but you handle the transaction away from us. Okay. Um, I probably can take one more, I guess. Yep. Uh, so one here. Uh, does everything have that is farther for the for sorry for it to move to um, IPv6? And my second question is um, uh, government has any role to play in the uh, because uh, I work for government and I always see a lot of notifications sharing that before this time we should sit to IPv6, but I never see it happen. Uh, what should we do? Okay, that's a good one as well. Um, so there is a role for the governments to play here, and uh, the RARs we've been engaging with OECD where the governments come. We've been engaging in IGF. Uh, in Sumi is here, you know, she's organizing a working group session IPv6 working group session in the IGF. So, and we've been going and talking to all the very various forums. Uh, we have also have one-to-one uh, -one interactions with the individual governments as well to create awareness, to educate them. A lot of governments uh, do have a task force, IPv6 task force. I believe the Indian government also have one. Uh, the DOD had one. I don't know what, what, what what's happening to that one now, but I know a few years back the DOD had one. So there is a, yes, they have to play a role here, you know, to educate, because ultimately they are the license holders of these networks, right? So, and they, the governments, you know, also feel that, you know, they don't have much IP, IP address in their own country. So this is the other way of convincing the networks to bring in more IP into the, net, uh, into the country, okay, into the economy. Um, and the areas we've been creating awareness, I know I was here two years back, uh, right after the 2011, uh, with the help of uh, Nixie, Spy, you know, DOD, DID, we actually did a roadshow in India. You know, we went to the major cities and we did meetings with the operators. So yeah, everyone's doing their own um, uh, bit of uh, awareness and uh, educating others. But as I said, it's ultimately the responsibility of the operator to actually deploy it. Do they have skills? 